Yo guys, what's up? It's RJ with Roads Liberty. Got um, something I'm doing today about Sam Cedar's video uh, from the other day. He was talking to a caller by the name of Phil um, about various libertarianism related topics. Um, I'm going to play little clips from the video um, on Sam's channel along with the uh, audio from the call and then I'll break it up and give you guys my interpretation of maybe where the caller could have been more assertive or better represented the viewpoints and where Sam wasn't really challenged too much and where he could have um, been held to task better on his position. Um, overall, the name of this article is Sam Cedar's Emotional Consequentialism. Basically what that means is that his whole way of arguing is based on the outcomes. He doesn't care about how we get there or, you know, what, you know, what blood gets spilled along the way. He's just concerned with the greatest amount of good for the greatest number of people. And without even getting into anything from the video, without even getting into a whole lot of deep philosophical stuff, um, consequentialism on its face is bad. Um, if you just start to think about it, it opens up all these Pandora box, can of worms type situations where it's like, well, how many penguins would you kill to save a human? Or, you know, if we could kill all the polar bears in the North Pole and feed everyone in Africa, would we do so? Um, you know, and who makes these decisions? And how do we constantly know that we're making them in a democratic way, if that's supposedly the way we should be making decisions, which... I think most libertarians would argue, uh, along with myself, that it is not the way to make decisions. So, at the end of the day, Sam Cedar, in this video, um, with the caller Phil, and in the past and in his other videos, he defends uh, the democratic process. He admits that it's in no way perfect, and that is, I guess, kind of the best sort of thing that we got. And um, so he has a consequentialist approach. He takes that stance a number of times, which I'll point out throughout this video. And he also, I think he's behaving rather emotionally. Um, you see him getting rather excited. You see him interrupting a lot. And you don't see him making very well thought out points. Um, also, when you're losing an argument, in the case where I find any statist would be losing an argument trying to defend statism, um, the feeling of having to concede things along the way, even if you're not giving up your biggest point in the argument, is enough to create anxiety. So that causes people to feel on edge or on tilt, and that's visible to the opponent. So if you're debating somebody and you're slipping, you know, everyone knows that it's going one way. So there's anxiety there on his part. You know, he's, he's chosen a stance that's untenable. Uh, as has every other statist. Um, it's not something that, we, you know, it's just like slavery. It's When you really apply the lens of morality and logic to it, you start to see that there's no r rational way to justify giving a small segment of population a special group, uh, a, a special set of rights. So, nonetheless, we'll jump into the video here and uh, break down some of the points. So yeah, basically, I think that you you have a few you know mischaracterizations uh, when it comes to libertarians. Um, I, I think recall you saying that um, you know, to libertarians it's all about a, a race to the top, and we don't care about the people who are at the bottom, that sort of thing. Okay. Is that okay? Um, and the thing is, uh, first of all, I don't see society uh, as a race quite the right characterization, but, you know, to, to make it to, to the top in terms of money would be just to produce things that other people want, produce goods and services that other people want. And so, you know, the race in that sense is to to serve other people, to, to benefit other people. So this is, <clears throat> this is a simple point that the caller is basically just trying to set up um, his reason for calling, which is that um, Sam has misrepresented or mischaracterized uh, libertarianism as a race to the top. Um, you know, if the call stayed to this point, I probably wouldn't have made this video because I think that the caller pretty much, you know, gets Sam to sort of give this up and uh, agree sort of here that, um, you know, he's not um, 
going to engage in an irrational discussion on what the free market is about or the definition of it or what the consequences of it are or versus you know Keynesian or you know government based options he uh, concedes that he is for the outcome based uh, model the consequentialist model and um, so I just I uh, set this up to show you that the caller initially was calling in just to show that mischaracterization on Sam's point of libertarianism being a race to the top he takes it down correctly I think by saying that in order to get to the top in the libertarians uh, worldview or model um, one needs to provide value to the market one needs to offer goods or services to um, to the extent that someone uh, is willing to exchange for that uh, good or service so you need to be able to make someone's life better um, you need to be able to create value for somebody um, Sam doesn't really try to um, take this down he changes the subject so before he does that I wanted to just give this to um, Phil who, who, who was a caller just to point out he, he sort of he nails it uh, right out of the gate um, but I guess Sam wants to wear himself out a little bit as most statists try to do when they get someone who can sort of talk about um, the fallacies around the state um, and I get into this later on in the video how you know you have to ask yourself is is Sam being intellectually honest does he actually want to learn if there's a better way other than using aggression or does he just want to emotionally defend what he's comfortable with and what he's used to so uh, we'll get back into more of the video I think that part of your arguments against libertarians yes. depend on a, a mischaracterization about libertarians' worldview, their motives, that sort of thing. And I, I, think I don't care about their motive. I'm talking about uh, the the results. Once again, you have Sam basically just saying he doesn't care about whatever it takes. He's just all about consequentialism. He's just about the results. Um, you'll be pointed out this a number of times. Should society basically say, you are crap out of luck. Sorry, you made your choice. We live in a libertarian, uh, uh, you know, fantasy world. If you make that mistake, you lose. So this is one of the first spots where the caller starts to mess up in his defense. Um, basically, instead of answering the question directly whether he believes there should be any involvement on society's part and to answer in the positive to where we can make libertarians look good insofar as we want better um, public involvement and what uh, you know a multiplicity of options he kind of uh, goofs that one and sort of concedes that um, he makes it a pragmatic thing at first saying that we're being mischaracterized again and then he brings up taxes which while accurate and while you know definitely part of the same discussion um, allows for Sam to pivot and start to you know, go after the question of force and taxation, and we get into some other arguments for antiquity and stuff like that. Um, but this is this is a point in the video, if you're watching the full video, where a caller should have went stronger at Sam and pointed out that you're not crap out of luck in the libertarian model. It's not a mischaracterization. It's it's more of a misunderstanding. You're not crap out of luck when you need assistance in the, in the in the libertarian model because under a pure libertarian society under a free market you're going to have a multiplicity of options furthermore uh, i think you could turn the table back around on sam's view which is to say that you're more so crap out of luck if you are using the state because the state has one option if you don't qualify for that benefit program or that assistance program then you are truly crap out of luck because there is the state because it's a monopoly um, you either fit the one size fits all or you are crap out of luck um so that's that's what i would have said had i you know been on the call there hopefully okay so um, how would you help how would society help that out or do you think society has any role do you think our government has any role in helping that person out not the government no okay no because so okay, it's just it's just it's just if you're lucky enough for a charity to come along and have the resources mm -hmm. to help you, you're in good shape. But if you're not, you're crap out of luck. Is that an accurate uh, representation of, that, uh, of what Ron Paul's saying? Uh, yes. Yes, that's what it is. Okay. So that's what I take issue with. Because As another side point, too, uh, to the same point of being crap out of luck under the current system, under the libertarian system, I would also bring up that, you know, under the current system, 
in parts of Florida, it's actually illegal to feed homeless people. And in many areas, um, you know, I can tell you this firsthand, homeless people are still hungry, so, and they're not being taken care of. So when con comparing the libertarian system to what he's advocating for, which is democracy or representation um, and a monopoly government, uh, under his model, we already have the result. We already have the consequential outcome to look at, which is a society where the lowest and hungriest among us are not being fed or not being taken care of on, um, as a rule. You know, it might be some situations where they are, but I'd say that's happening as a result of the free market, at least equally, if not greater, more so than it's happening as a result of taxation or of uh, coercion. So. Uh, I think the caller, Phil, should have went there as well, should have pointed out, you know, under the current system that you advocate for, Sam, we, we don't have, um, we don't have the safety net that you're, you're even arguing for. It doesn't even exist. So it's a failure. Um, it's just a promise, an empty promise. So that should be relevant uh, if something is actually given or just promised. So at least in libertarianism, we, we may not always have something shiny and pretty to offer uh, for a solution, but we're also not going to lie to you and tell you there's a solution when there's not. So so that's what I take issue with. Because A, we know there's not enough uh, resources in the world for charitable organizations to do that. B, we know they don't. They just don't. They don't even have the resources, and I don't think they have the inclination half the time. They don't, they're not mm -hmm. set up to do that. So All right, so here again, Sam is basically kind of creating a false dichotomy by saying that, um, you know, and in the caller, you know, gives him this too, gives him this ground, but basically he's creates the false dichotomy, dichotomy by saying that either charity is going to come from the state or it's going to come from a charitable organization, which I guess on its face sounds reasonable, but you know, that's really kind of a mindset that's still bent within the, you know, the con, con, uh, constraints of, you know, a status paradigm. When you think outside of that model, you can see that charity can come from, uh, charity already really does come from all different angles. I mean, the fact that you as a homeless person can go into a Starbucks and buy a water or a muffin for a dollar or two, which is what you'd pay at another store anyway, and they'll allow you to sit there, they'll allow you to charge your phone, they'll allow you, allow you to warm up, allow you to use the bathroom, allow you to use Wi-Fi to get in touch with family and friends, all for a dollar, and you get food with that. Um, that sounds pretty charitable to me, um, you know, and I think that if we have to ask ourselves the question, if, if companies weren't burdened with, you know, such high regulatory and taxation, um, hurdles to clear, and if individuals weren't burdened by s such, you know, high taxation, we'd all be in a much better position to be charitable. And we also have to ask ourselves how many people are homeless or downtrodden as a result of their belief in the state you know how many people are veterans who believe that they would go off to war and they would get something from that and they came back ill-equipped to continue their life as their peers are doing you know who didn't go so in so many senses the system that sam is advocating for as a safety net is really the cause of there being a, a poor class that can't provide for themselves when you when you add in the war on drugs where you consider how many families where the sole breadwinners are taken out um, because of a petty drug offense and they're put in jail where the taxpayer pays a hundred thousand dollars to put a man in jail that otherwise would have brought home thirty thousand to an otherwise extremely happy family but now that family not only isn't supported by that person by the breadwinner but now the state's supporting both parties and you know that's happening on a large scale so Unfortunately, the caller didn't have maybe the control or the time to, to really pivot it in that direction, but you know, it'd be time there to talk about Rothbard and talk about you know, Molyneux and some of the other bigger thinkers in the libertarian um, you know, ideology and to discuss how these minds have talked about ways to you know, get charity. Um, you know, I think it's great PR for a corporation to offer charity. Um, you know, in some form, you know, if even if it's, you know, free meal Thursdays for homeless people or whatever the case may be. Um, I think that when you take away the regulatory and the taxation burden, the ability for companies in the free market to offer the uh, offer charity as sort of a, a PR uh, maneuver, I think would start to become more and more common. So 
color didn't go there. But that's that's uh, something I would definitely highlight as a, as a you know a caveat to libertarianism or to free market um, organization society where you're not going to get that flexibility when you have the monopoly on charity when it's done coercively through one centralized source no one's going to go out and try to start their own charity on the side just like no one starts a competition to the power company no one starts a competition to the roads because they're done centralized and they're forced um to be done that way so my first uh you may not like the first way that i uh characterize it but that's the truth okay you're just saying like we have no problem if someone divinely intervenes. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that we don't, we're not pro people dying. We're just like against any attempt to save their lives if it is done by, in an organized fashion by society. So just pointing out here that basically Sam does his best job to set up a false dichotomy in that it's either we want to help people who need help and we do it through government centralized means or we will never help people basically his whole false dichotomy that he's setting up is that it's not ever going to happen or it's not practical or you know he's just trying to sort of brush aside the notion that there's another way of uh providing charity to those who need it uh, other than the centralized way i think the same moral rules apply to everyone okay you agree with that uh, i i don't know you have to be more explicit but I think this part of the video is really telling because the caller asks him a straight up question of whether he basically believes that rights should be universalized. He said, uh, you know, do you believe that the uh, same moral rule should be applied to everyone? And Sam takes a second to think about it and eventually goes with, I don't know. Um, and then kind of asterisks it with probably, but I have to hear where you're going. So it's almost like he doesn't want to be caught but if you're afraid of getting caught or if the person you look to for your moral views in life is afraid of getting caught on the question of whether they think um, rights should be universalized, I think you could form your own conclusions from that. Um, but do you want the person that's guiding your moral judgments to think that there should be special pockets or categories of rights for special people? Um, the caller is just trying to get Sam to acknowledge that everyone should be bound by the same rules. Um, that sounds like a pretty fair statement to me. Um, I don't know what you have to be born into or whatever to get into the special class that Sam thinks there should be a separate class of rules, I guess, government, but voting or being nominated or being in the right place at the right time when the other guy dies, if you're the vice president or something, that to Sam is enough to be in charge of um, our fate and destiny. So. Continuing with the video. And therefore, for you, taxation is uh, essentially theft at the, the uh, end of a gun. And I would say to you, yes, it is. And what is okay. your alternate uh, version of society? Because I'll tell you. So this is the typical posture of a statist losing an argument. Basically, he's going downhill in so far as he completely admits defeat on his primary premise. He says, yeah. Okay, taxation is theft at the point of a gun. And then he goes on to say, in the form of somewhat of an antagonistic question, in the sense that he doesn't look for an answer, he doesn't um, follow the question through with an honest, he doesn't let the, the caller really get enough time in or, you know, doesn't give him a chance to really fairly answer the question. But nonetheless, he does admit that taxation is theft and that his whole society that he advocates for, which is basically progressivism, he basically wants to go for whatever policy um, that makes tomorrow a little bit better for the, the worst among us, the, the lowest class, I guess you could say. He wants to try to raise the quality of living as best as possible every day. A noble cause, um, but he's not. He's a typical consequentialist, typical pragmatist insofar as he doesn't want to look at the way things work. He just wants to look at whether he doesn't mind pulling strings and closing his eyes and connecting all the wires and, and cords underneath the, the hood of the, of the beast. He just wants to make sure that the output is right at the end, which might work for some time, but it's not a, a good long-term plan. You want to understand how things work and you want to be able to cook a meal to taste the same way every time. So um, long story short, uh, he admits defeat right here. And um, you know, if 
if he's listening to this or if any of his uh, people who, who you know share views with Sam are listening to this, I would ask you guys to be intellectually honest and to try to at least do what he wasn't willing to do and entertain the alternative of a course of society. Look into volunteerism, look into, not in, in this specific video, but in some of the other videos on Road to Liberty, some of the videos on Voluntary Virtues, some of the videos on Stefan Molyneux's channel, Freedom Fiends, Free Talk Live. Look into the other prominent voices in, in the uh, discussion and find out what these thoughts are based on because Sam is just advocating for a consequentialist outcome. He's just advocating for whatever works best today we'll run with. He doesn't have uh, principles, you know, and he's admitting that. He's saying, yeah, I work off of theft and, and, and force. So he asks for the answer, but my statement basically from here on out, I'll give you some more insight on the video, some more coverage, but basically he's saying, what's the answer but he's not actually looking to, to understand the answer so maybe you will hopefully you will Hopefully you'll keep studying and go past sam he just wants to believe in, in the god of the state and you know damned be uh us for all of you know the side effects of war and of um you know regulation and taxation you know i guess we have to just deal with that because sam feels like that's legitimate because i'll tell you something uh, contracts are also enforced at the butt of a gun by government. Well, yes, but, but hold on. Uh, contracts are, are things, uh, you know, things that I think are morally enforceable contracts. Oh. Are contracts that people have taken upon themselves. Okay, so we're going by your morals. That's, that's voluntary. Okay, so we're going by so, your morals. Well, I mean, you have to go by someone's, and I think I, I have a you know consistent set of moral rules all right. uh, about... You can see right there, Sam got all excited because he sort of got one there. Um, you know, the caller shouldn't have given that up, basically saying that there was no objective set of reasoning for the rules of, you know, the libertarian sort of society that he was advocating for. Uh, when Sam says, you know, so we're going by your rules, the caller kind of goes into that and says, well, someone has to make the rules and I don't see anything wrong with it. He's kind of looking to like steal the thunder of libertarianism. He should have went back to the fundamental principles of from where he's really getting his beliefs. And he should have said, no, you know, Sam, we're not, I'm not making up this stuff right here off the top of my head. I'm saying non-aggression principle, you know, property rights, universal ethics. These are principles saying that we should all start with the same rules as regarding our rights and our freedoms. Um, fundamentally, when we start with that, um, we're equal from the get. So there is no complaints. He didn't go to that, so again, Sam, I'm not going to show that whole footage, but if you watch the video, Sam does take a little uh, lead, I guess. He kind of gets out uh, in front a little bit here because of that. You lost this debate ages ago because most people, when faced with the idea of should we let that guy die in the street, as a government, as a society, the answer is no. Well, here, Even if I it think, means uh, it, it, oppressively taking taxes, which, you know, I got news for you. This country's always taking taxes. Once again, we got a false dichotomy followed by a uh, change of direction, misdirection. So basically he takes, um, you know, the same argument that we, we need the government to save the downtrodden. And he says, you know, mankind has spoken. He said since basically since the beginning of time, we look at the guy in the street and say, you know, we're not going to let him starve. We're going to get together and do something to save him. Um, before going into his misdirection, which comes next, his false dichotomy pops up again, which is he says, you want to help people, you need to use the state. Um, he's basically saying either either a bad person, you don't want to help people, or you are a good person and you know that the only way to help someone is to use the state. He doesn't allow for there to be any middle ground or any third option of, you are a good person and you want to help people, but you know that you can do it without using aggression. That's even more moral if you if you have that option. Uh, the misdirection where he turns and, and misdirects is he basically says that, you know, America, well, he says this country, he says this country's always had taxes. Um, that's a pretty broad and pretty much uneducated statement to make, as most of us know. As he probably knows that you know America has had taxes to varying degrees, but the income tax is only uh, you know 100 or so years old, and 
you know, the, the independent, the, the war of independence was fought over a tea tax, which is just one good. Now, now everyone's taxed on everything. So for him to overlook the question of taxation isn't even honest. And I think he knows that. And I think that's why if you watch the full video, you see him trying to skate past that. What are the countries that don't take taxes in this world? Uh, well, I don't know of any. Yes. So here Sam makes another uh, couple of fallacies. Um, basically, he's making the um, appeal to tradition, which is a conclusion supported solely because it is long held to be true. So he's basically saying, you know, the effect of that type of arguing is saying, he says, show me a country that doesn't collect taxes. So almost like because no country um, is moral in its fundraising, he he uses that as evidence to say that no country can be moral in its fund. And I think in some senses he's actually correct, even though he doesn't mean to be, because um, then by definition it wouldn't be a country, it'd be a club, it'd be an organization. Um, but he doesn't take that logical conclusion himself. He doesn't get that far through. He just points out, well, there's always been taxes in every single country and there always will be. So that's an appeal to uh, tradition. Or there's another one which is actually the um, retrospective determinism, which is the argument that because some event has occurred, its occurrence must have been inevitable for beforehand. So it's like, well, here we are today with all these taxes and there must be a, no other way we could have done it. So, yeah, of course, you know, on a lot of people just watching this, I didn't even know the names of the fallacies. I had to stop and, you know, get you guys that. But I knew he was trying to use some amateur junk to try to, you know, slip past the fact that he already admitted that taxation is theft. Um, you know, you got to, you know, find weird ways to worm out of that. And he's basically just pointing to antiquity, pointing to, you know, the past and saying, well, we've always had taxes, so there must be no other way. So you actually have to own the implications of your philosophy, your set of beliefs, whatever you want to call it, your religion. This one's kind of funny. Obviously, he could say the same thing to himself. You know, I think that's where we kind of start going in circles, uh, our camp and his camp. He's basically saying, you know, you libertarians got to own the results of your actions, of your beliefs, which he thinks puts us in the corner of accepting that we want the guy in the street to die. But he doesn't want to go so far as to own the results of his taxation. He doesn't want to accept the drones. He doesn't want to accept the NSA. He doesn't want to accept what happens when you give government an, a blank check, signed check. It's blank. You have this sense that philosophy and this political theory of yours has to be about uh, consistent principles. No, I'm interested in outcomes, better outcomes for people. That's my principle, period. I don't care okay. if, if, if what I'm saying falls into a rubric of libertarianism or liberalism or progressivism or Bolshevism. It doesn't matter to me. This is where Sam Cedar leads the progressives right off a cliff. I mean, he, he's all on board with consequentialism so much that he says, I don't even care what it's called. I don't care if it's called liberalism, conservatism, Bolshevism, thisivism, that. He doesn't care if it's called Nazism. He doesn't care if it's called, you know, fascism, Stalinism, he just wants the best results. And he's not using science. And he's in, in, in this previous clip, you hear him basically denouncing science. He says, you know, well, I'm not, I don't need principles. I don't need, uh, you know, all these principles for philosophy. I just need my results to be good. Well, if you don't have consistent principles, when you run an experiment, it's not science. It's just throwing crap against the wall and seeing what happens. It's not actual science. Actual science is when you have a uh, basic environment that's consistent that you can hold consistent where you can do experiments. So he doesn't want to even start with any kind of ideological framework. He just wants to shoot for his results from the hip. And libertarians are trying to scream at him and tell him, look, we know where this bus is going to go, buddy. Like, you need to have a map. You need to have a compass. But he just wants to, you know, assume he knows where to go. And he doesn't want to acknowledge that he's still, even if he did know where to go, he's still just one person or the voters are just... Even if they're lucky, they're lucky once and they, they chart a good course and then the next time they don't because you don't have a true compass, you don't have a true map. So this whole point is definitely made clear if you're watching Sam's uh, content here. Um, and I just encourage people to not look at this man as a moral compass. He's just arguing for consequentialism and you know subjective morality. Whatever works during the day and whatever works during the night doesn't, doesn't have to be consistent, just whatever works to get you through. So I don't, I don't support that. 
Because there's always going to be a situation where winners and losers are being chosen by a government unless you get to your free market, which does not exist. So you're just going to go towards this goal that does not exist. And it's all it's going to do is the government is going to choose large corporations further and more and more and more. That's all that happens. All right, so Sam seems to have started to confuse himself. He's confusing me. He's confusing everybody. But when you're not making sense, it's impossible to not be confusing. He's now admitting that governments pick the winners and losers, but yet he's still advocating for government as a means of having equality. For the, so if the governments pick winners and losers, and you're advocating for more government, and I'm advocating for less government, you want the winners and losers to be picked, if that's what I understand correctly. I just want... Okay the winners to be people or entities which provide more benefit for more people. Okay, and the way that that is accomplished is by letting the free market take its own course. You want the most benefit for the most amount of people, then you have to let the individual people decide what's beneficial for them and what is not. By writing a policy, you try to enact a one-size-fits-all solution to a bunch of people's individual lives who are unique and special and don't fit into a one-size-fits-all solution. So. If you really want what you say you want, Sam, which is the most good for the most people, is you want to return the choice to the individual to decide how to govern their own life. My roads. They're receiving that just as much as you. My infrastructure. I mean, my roads, my infrastructure. Okay. Uh, For for which they also pay, mind you. But, I mean, they certainly didn't pay enough to build the roads. Walmart didn't pay enough to build all the roads in this country. I'm sorry. I swear I'm not doing any real fancy or crazy editing here. He just jumps right into Rhodes. Like, I had to put that in the video. It doesn't fit into anything. He doesn't have a logical segue into it. He doesn't really have a logical way out of it. You can even see him when he talks about Walmart not having contributed equally as the citizens did, whatever, to the Rhodes. Even the look on his face when you see the clip, you can tell he's he's not even sure why he brought that up. He's not even sure why that's relevant. He's just like, Rhodes! So, that's... Check that off. Status defensive argument. Roads. Okay. Yes, no, I know. In your world, there's no difference between a government and some dude who just walks down the street. But in my world, there is. That the, that the fact that we have democracy, that we vote for this, as, as flawed as it may be, is it does give them legitimate power. We are citizens of a country. We are not, we're okay. not just some, some aliens who are meeting in a space bar somewhere. So a few things. First of all, you can see Sam's getting excited. He's getting emotional. He's like, we're not aliens meeting in a space bar. Like, you know, that's neither here nor there. That has nothing to do with anything I'm going to do with the argument. Um, You know, he's saying uh, what he's trying to defend is his statement that to him, a government is different than a dude walking down the street. He says to you guys, to libertarians, a government is the same thing as a guy walking down the street. To me, it's different. To me, because we vote, because we have representatives, it's different. But what he doesn't want to acknowledge is that's just to him. So his system says, whatever I think is okay, I can impose upon you. He doesn't seem to want to acknowledge that the libertarians at least aren't trying to do that same thing. We're not trying to force anything upon anyone else. We're just trying to be left alone. He's saying, well, because other people vote, I have the right to not leave you alone. I'm sorry, okay, dude. So- there is a difference. Like You've got to get this through your head. Or essentially, he's saying mob rule. He's saying there's a lot of us, and we all want to control you. So get this through your head. We're going to control you. They go on and on for a little bit more about minimum wage and about um, the notion of being able to sell sell yourself into slavery. Um, that's kind of libertarian 101 stuff. Uh, the minimum wage thing. We have stuff on Road to Liberty about that already. Uh, a few different pieces, and the ability to sell yourself into slavery. Slavery. I'll just. To spell real quick by pointing out that it's not the most profitable arrangement for the slave holder or the recipient of labor to have a slave relationship because then you basically take on all the accountability for that person's well-being and they don't have to take good care of their body. They treat it as a renter because they don't own their body anymore. So the best scenario for everyone is for each of us to have our freedom and our liberties. Um, and even the free market would sort that out. Slavery is not very efficient once we have machines. Um, but I don't go into that. I don't go into any of the other little side arguments they have about minimum wage and stuff because the main point of me making this video is to point out that Sam Cedar is not a guy to be taken seriously for his philosophical, moral, or political views. He is a guy that likes to talk about religion, likes to talk about some um, current events. He's an atheist um, and good for him. 
and uh, you know, in the areas that he's well spoken on, I'm sure he he can hold his own. But I think that if anyone's basing their liber libertarian or uh, statist perspective on what Sam Cedar has to say, I think you should question that. Uh, hopefully, this video has given you some reason to do so. Hopefully, uh, you have some points for further study. Check out Murray Rothbard. Check out. Um, the Mises organization, check out some of what the brighter minds in um, the, the message and the conversation for liberty have to say before uh, letting Sam uh, steer you off course. Uh, with that being said, guys, hopefully this video was informative to you in some way. Um, if you want to throw a little bit our way, vote to liberty forward slash donate. Um, and uh, we'll keep doing what we do. All right, guys.